Warning, this episode contains adult language, mature situations, shy girl with very fierce eyes, young guys who don't know how to tell a girl they like them, slice of life antics, teenage romance shyness, and some manga release news. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Listener discretion is advised. Episode 469, The Girl with the Sampaku Eyes. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spark and Manga Review. I'm your host, Zan, saying konnichiwa, aloha, bonjourno, and what's up? Hope all of you are doing well out there and hope you're excited for another fun-filled episode because I definitely am and I am so happy to be back again. I know that it's not been that long because I released an extra episode on Thursday and we're releasing another episode on Friday. So we're going to get lots more manga reviews and some other things and I hope you guys are excited for some fun-filled episodes. And beforehand, if you are joining us for the first time, welcome Spyrokin, or some podcast and vain reviews about connectly enhanced narratives, is a nerdy podcast where we talk about various geeky subjects depending on the show you're listening to. Since this is the manga review, obviously we're talking about manga. I tell you how the art style is, the overarching plot, the quality, the production style, and most importantly, if it's worth investing your time in or not. You don't have to agree with anything that I and my co-host say, but we try to be educational, enlightening, exciting, and most importantly, entertaining. You can check out any of our earlier episodes at www.spirekin.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, and various other social media sites. If you have any questions or comments, you can email me personally at zan, that's xan at spirekin.com. And if you're looking for any of our stuff, just type in Spirekin in the search bar and I'll guarantee you find us one way or the other. Uh, also, if you're Twitter, you can always tweet me at Spirekin. And finally, one last thing. If you like what you hear, support our Patreon, help us create more fun content for you to enjoy. And if you are a society member, hey, what's up? Hope you're doing well, and I hope that you're having a blast. If you join our Patreon, there's four different tiers, all with different bonuses from unreleased episodes, bonus episodes, video content, like the -the behind-the-scenes videos of me recording, and some other really cool things. So check it out at patreon.com forward slash spirekin. And with that in mind, let's actually get to the manga review of the episode because if you remember that last episode i spun that one that only the wheel of manga and it did turn be they reviewing a manga that was written by shosuke sarada and published by square enix but it's released over here by denpa yes the company with only three guys they've been doing a blast with their work and every single production they've done is amazing i love inside mari i love kaiji and the man who created gundam i'm hearing a lot of good things about so that's on my list but the manga that we are talking about today is one that I love this production quality. And we'll go into that in a little bit. But this was originally a Twitter comic. So you could read it all on Twitter. Then they adapted it and changed it into a five-volume manga series that is released, like I said, by Denpa. It's originally released in Gengen Pixiv, uh website. And it is released in 2018 to 2022. There are two volumes currently out. There are five volumes total and it is a comedy romance slice of life school life manga that is a shoujo and what is the name of this story i'm talking about i'm talking about sampaku ganchan wa su taite or the girl with the sampaku eyes so this manga is like so many others that we've talked about where we have a girl who has a communication issue and she's trying to get put herself out there and deal with something like a crush or life in general. But this one does something a little bit different and I like that about it. So the whole premise is we have Amane Mizuno. She is the eponymous girl with the Sampaku eyes. And she has a bit of a problem. She has kind of resting bitch face. But more, actually, she has Sampaku eyes, which pretty much means that she has white on the top and bottom of her eyes, and it gives her this look that she's fierce and angry when it's, that's the furthest from the truth. She's sweet and nice. It's just that she's very unapproachable looking. So people are very intimidated by her. And that's kind of the problem that people are intimidated by her, even though she's so sweet. And the thing is that Amane likes her neighbor in class, the person sits next to her, Kato. He's a guy that constantly says hi to her and he's sweet to her. And she has like super feelings for him. But because she is so intimidated by him, she doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know how to be like, hey, I like you or hi, how you doing? So she has to struggle with this when he's constantly saying good morning to her, talking to her. And she's like little things that he does make her really, really happy. But she looks intimidating and scary. 
It's like, for example, when he, she first sees him in the morning of the day, she's like, okay, he said hello to me yesterday, so today's the day I'm going to say hello. So she struggles and tries to say hello. Other people are talking to her, and she ignores him just for Kato. And eventually she does, and she says good morning to him in a really awkward way. And he's like, oh, you said good morning to me. Thank you. And she's like, oh, my God, best day ever. And that's her thing. And she just is trying her best to live her life and deal with her feelings for Kato. And it gets to the point where her friends are heckling her about it constantly because they know she likes Kato. They also kind of figure that Kato likes her as well. So they're kind of going back and forth saying, hey, can you believe this? It's going to be sports day. Are you going to be cheering for him? No. Well, why not? He's going to be there and you can sort of support and you're blushing red a little bit as we're talking about him, aren't you? No, I'm not. And she gets a little intimidated by it, but they're trying to push her out of her comfort zone to better herself. And they're her two friends are really fun. They're kind of the Greek choir because they know what's going on and they're constantly pushing her. Like they trick her and then they give each other thumbs up subtly so they know, yes, this is going to work because they're playing Cupid. And it's her just trying to, like I said, make Kato like her by being a good person and dealing with these situations. Like, for example, he does nice things for her. Like she forgets her wallet in her breakfast one day and she has to buy some bread. She doesn't have enough for it. And he ends up buying her some bread that's the last one there. And they end up sharing it. It's kind of awkward but sweet at the same time. Another time we have where he's um, he forgets his history book. And she ends up sharing the history book with him. Even though at first she just hands him the book and just goes back and like, oh crap, I need the history book for it. So they kind of share it. And it's cute and nice. And it's adorable how Amane is working towards this. And it's a more relaxed relationship. And it's obvious at the last chapter of the first volume, slight spoilers, he really likes her too. Like, he really likes her, and he thinks she's so cute, even though she has a weird face. And he's afraid that when he says something that she's offended, when in fact she's really happy. So he's kind of figuring out, does she like me, does she doesn't? And it's these two working towards communicating together. And it's relaxing and enjoyable and it's one that's going to put a smile on your face and that's what i really like about it now we've talked about tons of romances and some of them are very drama filled and they deal with the fact oh these two can't communicate with each other and they're just going to be very awkward about it and then they're going to be misunderstandings this isn't that this is there's minor misunderstandings but it's not the oh i'm going to date someone else because i think that they don't like me when in fact they do like me or I'm going to be awkward and, you know, I can't tell my true feelings to this person, so I'll let someone else have them. This isn't that. This is just they like each other and they're working towards telling each other. And it's the typical, I'm sitting next to a weird neighbor, but this one's not that bad and I enjoy it a lot. For romantic purposes, I think this one is my number two. Because still my number one of all of these from the comedy ones is going to be my neighbor Seki. But for romance with characters who have communication issues it's still going to be comey can't communicate i think that comey just knocks it out of the park a little more because they have so many diverse characters and cover so much in this one while we do have other characters the focus is on kato and amane and even amane's big brother who is the boy with the sampaku eyes that her friends fall madly in love with so that is what this series is about and one thing i gotta say first off this is a Web comic. So as you can see from the pictures I've shown, if you're watching the video, and if you're not, well, the color is really popping on this because it's actually a color manga. It's using a lot of pinks and oranges and blacks and a little bit of blue, but for the most part, it is those colors and that's the palette and it makes it pop a little more and makes it feel unique for what it is, for the story it is. And also, Denpa did a great job with this release. Like some of their others, they gave it fake uh, dust jacket doors, which open and close. And on the inside of the opening, it actually says, thank you. Oh, my God. They're reading the dust jacket. That's some really high, cool level stuff. Amani, you got to say something. Come on. We'll do something for you. And then it says, continued on the back. And in the back, she's wearing a cosplay outfit that is adorable. And she says, thank you for reading it. I'll see you in the next volume. And this is a great release for for it while there is one little tiny thing that looks like it's an error it's not an error it's actually just the way they wanted to cut it and as a graphic des- designer somebody who studied it i love this and it's well done i enjoy this series it's inventive it does something a little bit different than some of the other ones like for example hitomi is shy with strangers it was a lot of boob jokes and 
and just it's more shown in story. This is a Jose story. There isn't a lot of fan service, and I like that it's not all fan servicey, but it feels more intimate and a little more enjoyable, in my opinion. Now, for that reason, and I was thinking about it, I have to give this a really, really, really cool. It's worth reading. It's well done. It's well published. And it's one which, it's only five volumes long. And it's not a will they, won't they for, for a bunch of things. The main thing is, she's trying to talk to him. He's trying to talk to her. That's it. It's a fun slice of life series that flows really well. And I'm pretty sure they're going to get together. There's no like, oh, maybe they won't. This is, they're going to get together. And hopefully it's a very well done get together. But we're going to have to wait and see. I'm excited to pick up volume two. And I really like this series. But if you've read The Girl with the Sampaku Eyes, what are your thoughts? Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? Uh, let me know what you think. Also, at, at the bottom of all our posts, we put a random question of the episode. For this episode, our random question is going to be, do you know someone who has Sampaku Eyes or Resting Bitch Face or some sort of this? They look really mean, but they're really nice. Let me know. Email me, zanspiker.com. Or tweet me at Spark and let me know what your thoughts are. And so, with that in mind, let's actually get to something that I really enjoy doing, which is the manga releases for the week. So these are what came out yesterday, June 7th, 2022. And we have 38 titles, which I'm really excited about. Some of them are really cool. Some of them are just kind of shocking. So in order, we have A Silent Voice Complete Collector's Edition 2. This is the second half of the Silent Voice Collection, and it's a really nice hardcover. We have Accomplishments of the Duke's Daughter, Light Novel, Volume 5. Akira, Art of Wall, which is the art book for Akira. I think this is all of it. So this one I've heard a lot about. We're going to have to wait and see how it goes. You have Black Clover, Volume 29. Blood on the Tracks, Volume 10. Blood on the Tracks, Volume 9. The manga also, so both are being released. Cells at Work, Baby, Volume 4. Chainsaw Man, Volume 11. Chronicles of an Aristocrat Reborn in Another World, the manga, Volume 5. Darling in the Frack, Volume 3, 4. Ghost Reaper Girl, Volume 1. I Got Caught Up in a Hero Summons, But the Other World Was a Peace, Volume 4. Imakoi, Now I'm in Love, Volume 2. Interviews with Monster Girls, Volume 10. Now that's one I haven't heard in a while. I thought that series got canceled, but I guess not. Lovesick Ellie, Volume 4. Monologue Woven for You, Volume 2. Name Kawasan Won't Take a Licking, Volume 1. Orient 9. Peach Boy Riverside, Volume 7. Reborn as a Space Mercenary, I Woke Up Piloting the Strongest Starship, Volume 3. This is the manga, of course. Sailor Moon 2, the Naoko Takuchi Collection version. This is the super nice Omnibus edition, which looks beautiful. You have Shaman King Omnibus, Volume 9, which is Volumes 25 to 27 of, of Shaman Kings. Snow White with the Red Hair, Volume 19. I think that there's only two volumes left after this. I could be wrong. I'll confirm. The Ancient Megas Bride, Volume 16. The Girl in the Arcade, Volume 2. The Haunted Bookstore, Gateway to a Parallel Universe, The Light Novel, Volume 4. The Strange Adventures of a Broke Mercenary, The Light Novel, Volume 5. The two of them are pretty much like this, Volume 2. The Weakest Hammer Begins a Journey to Pick Up Trash, The Manga, Volume 1. This is screwed up, but I was reincarnated as a girl in another world, Volume 1. Until I Met My Husband, the essay novel and the manga. This is one that I, is one of the more interesting biograph, biographical mangas. And also that we're getting the essay novel. So this is going to be one which is going to be pretty intriguing. I'm going to put this on the Wheel of Manga probably in two weeks when I can get a hold of it. Because I tried ordering it and they're saying it's pushed back a little bit. But this is one I'm excited about. Uh, anyway, Vampire Dormitory Volume 5. What Did You Eat Yesterday, Volume 18. Worlds and Harem, Fantasia Academy, Volume 1. Yakuza Reincarnation, Volume 2. Yona of the Dawn, Volume 36. And Yuen and the Haunted Hot Springs, Volume 20. So which of these are you most excited for? Like, for me personally, I think that I'm most excited for Silent Voice Collection 2, Ghost Reaper Girl, Chronicles of Aristocrat Reborn in Another World, Lovesick Ellie, um, Sailor Moon 2, Snow White with the... Red Hair, Ancient Megas Bride, Girl in the Arcade, and Until I Met My Husband. I These ones all are interesting. Oh, and What Did You Eat Yesterday? I'm excited for those. Which are the ones you want to read? Let me know. Email me, zanspirekin.com, or tweet me at Spirekin. And I think that's it for this episode, except for that one part you are waiting for. But beforehand, remember to like, share, subscribe. 
Check out all of our earlier episodes. We've got tons of new stuff coming out. We have been releasing tons of lost content that I've been able to find because I found an old hard drive hidden somewhere. I released um, our missing uh, movie review episodes. I released a couple of Zan's Extraordinary Superhero Examination podcasts. I released our fourth episode of the Spirekin Book Corner Review, which is a really fun one. It's a really weird book. Trust me. Can't wait for you to check that out. And, well... Check out all of our other podcasts at Spirekin.com. And thank you so much for listening, checking out, subscribing, checking out the YouTube channel, and just being here. Because every time I get a new comment, a new email, a new subscriber, it just fills me with joy and makes me want to keep doing this. And I'm going to keep doing this as long as I can because I love this. I love talking about mangas, uh, recommending mangas, and just informing about mangas. I love doing this. I'm going to do this until I'm an old man who has to read them with a magnifying glass or read large print manga or be the guy who makes large print manga. I don't know. But we're going to have to wait and see how it's all going to go. But thank you so much. And you're all awesome. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you want to send me any messages, zanspirekin.com. So with that in mind, let's get to the part you've all been waiting for. What do we talk about? We're talking about that one, that only, the Yes, friends, the Wheel of Manga, except no substitute. Now, what is the Wheel of Manga? The Wheel of Manga is a Wheel of Fortune with 10 slots on it. And what I've done is I've assigned a manga tile to each of the 10 slots. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin this wheel, whatever number it lands on. The manga that's in that spot is the one I review in the next episode of the Spark and Manga Review, episode 470. That is 30 away from episode 500. I'm excited to... Check this out and see what we're going to review. So let's spin and see what we're going to have because we got some fun titles on here and we got some kind of disturbing titles as well. So let's spin and see what we're going to do. Number four. Haven't had that in a while. Uh, so in the next episode, I'm reviewing a manga about a witch who goes on a journey. Uh, we're talking about Wandering Witch Elaine. I've heard mixed about this series. I tried watching the first episode of the anime, and for some reason my uh, Crunchyroll wasn't working, but it might be back up there. But we're going to have to wait and see. But I'm definitely going to read this manga and see how it goes. Um, if you've read this, let me know what you think. I'm going to probably release that episode on Friday, so i got three days to read this entire series, or as much as I can. I'll get a couple of volumes of it, so we're going to have to wait and see. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And as usual, I'm your host, Zan. I'm Gonsville. Catch you guys next time, and keep reading manga. I'll see you later.